So let's start out, we already did sodium chloride, but let's just do it using the, the procedure that we had there. We have first represent, recognize the type. So we're gonna look at the first atom, always, right? Sodium, we go like this, is sodium here? Here or here? Well, sodium's right here, right? Sodium, that's a plus one charge. I don't have to deal with doing any prefixes or anything because it's in type none. So the name is simply sodium chloride. Simple. Let's go ahead and do um, what we have is chromium chloride. Again, I look here. So I ask myself, what's the type? Is it in group one or two? Chromium. Nope. Okay. Is it over here in the transition? There it is, right there. If it's here, we don't know the charge, so I have to use a Roman numeral to represent the charge. Now I have to figure out what the charge is. Well, it's chromium chloride, which are three chlorine atoms. Chlorine we know is a charge of negative one, okay? So there's one minus charge, and there's three of them. If there are three chlorines, each with a minus one charge, and this whole compound doesn't have a charge at all, then chromium must have a charge of plus three. That makes sense to you. That way, chromium having a charge of plus three will balance out the three negatives from um, each chlorine atom, okay? So this, this compound here is type two, and therefore it's going to be chromium. We follow the, um, our template, all right? And there's the name, Roman numerals, which we said was three, then a space, right? And we have the, uh, find the anion chloride with the IDE ending, chromium three chloride. Okay, um, and let's do uh, this next guy here. We look at the first atom and we see that we have uh, nitrogen. The question is, where is nitrogen? Is it here? Nope. Is it here? Nope. Is it here? Yes, so I'm dealing nitrogen, okay, and fluorine. Those, both of those atoms, both those elements are in this um, the P blocker in this area here, which means I need to use type tri, and tri meaning dry or tri di mono those prefixes, right? So what you do is we follow the template. We get the name of the first compound, and then the prefix. So we've got nitrogen. Now I need the prefix, which is this three here. How many fluorines do I have here? I have three of them. That's tri fluoride. Okay. All right. I'm going to do the next one and we're going to do it a little bit quicker. Potassium bromide, bromine, or bromide, but we have potassium and bromine. What are we going to do? Let's look. Is potassium in the first group? Uh, yep, there it is. I don't need to worry about anything at all. It's type none. So I just write the two compounds. Potassium bromide. Okay, next. Cu2O, copper oxide. Um, notice in that name, copper oxide, I'm not saying that, that too necessarily, okay? Technically, if you want to be clear when you're explaining something to somebody, you would say um, you have to recognize the charge. So it's not copper two oxide here, and we'll see that why that's not the case. Okay, so copper is not in group one or two, it's in the transition, and if it's in the transition, what does that mean? We've got to represent it with some Roman numerals. Okay, Cu2O, we know that oxygen has a charge of two minus. Copper, therefore, if there's two of them, must have a charge of plus one. So the formula is telling us what the charge of copper is, if it's written correctly, okay? So with that, we have copper, and we just said it must have a charge of plus one if it's gonna balance out this two minus oxygen here. So we put one, okay, oxide. Now, you don't have to say one, or you can omit the one um, technically, but you can also put it in. Both, both are correct. I personally like to put it in because um, I feel like, why am I gonna add another rule to what I'm doing? Copper, one oxide, it's fine. Um, this last guy here is pretty straightforward. Same thing, what do we do? Well, I've got magnesium. Oh, there it is, group two. Has a two plus charge, doesn't matter. I'm not using any prefixes or anything anyway. I just name my two compounds. Magnesium chloride. Okay, um, I wanna do one more type tri 
type three examples. Let's go ahead and do hmm, CO, okay, um, and CO2. And the reason I want to do these two is because they're just common that we've all heard before and they stick in our heads, okay? So I have carbon, both carbons here, and oxygen, right? And I recognize that carbon is not in group one or two. It's not in the transition. It's over here. If it's over here, I've got to use prefixes of some kind, okay? So carbon, I put first. Then I've got one oxygen, carbon monoxide. We've already done this, okay? Then I have carbon with two oxygen. Same thing, carbon. This is dioxide. And why is that? Well, because there are two oxygens, so dioxide. So in this case, in type tri, the prefixes represent how many of those atoms you have. CO2, I have two oxygens, dioxide. Okay? If I had more than one of the first atom, I would have to put that. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys with something a little more fun. Let's see. I want you to name copper or give me the formula for copper to tellurium. Okay? And that'll be fun. Well, okay. I might be playing uh, the word fun a little too quickly there because this still is chemistry, but chemistry is awesome. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. There'll be another video coming right after this one with a lot more examples. And basically, we'll just be doing a lot more of this and going back and forth between the name and the formula um, rather than going through each step every time. Okay?